All right. Um, actually, I'd like all of you to uh, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> that was not only for my nerves, but also, what if I was to tell you that there are thousands of chemical compounds in your breath that can be potentially related to other diseases or your current state of health? Now, this is not actually a new idea. Uh, back in the year 400 before the Common Era, the Hippocrates, he wrote that uh, maybe your breath aroma can be related to your health. Well, maybe that was a correlation between a night of drinking wine and a hangover the next day with bad breath. But uh, it wasn't until the late 1700s that Lavoisier and Laplace actually identified that there's carbon dioxide in our breath. And through the development of more uh, precise and accurate analytical techniques in the 1970s, uh, a couple studies have shown that there are thousands of compounds in our breath. And can they be related to other diseases? Well, it turns out a couple studies have shown that possibly yes. We can actually detect uh, if somebody has diabetes just through uh, acetone in your breath. That's uh, the same stuff a nail polish remover. So some other studies have shown that uh, possibly kidney disease, lung cancer, and tuberculosis. Now, I would like to focus a little bit more on tuberculosis today because it is arguably one of the most devastating infectious diseases today. And we probably don't have that mindset here um, because tuberculosis is often thought of a disease of the past. There's a tuberculosis outbreak in the United States in the 1940s. For example, in Kentucky, almost as many people died during World War II in the United States from tuberculosis than that were from Kentucky fighting in the war. But through the development of great health care and everything, uh, we've been actually able to eradicate almost tuberculosis here in the United States. But this is not the case today everywhere else. Developing nations, it is more likely that somebody will die of tuberculosis or a combination of other diseases with tuberculosis than any other disease. Hence, the World Health Organization has declared a World TB Day to promote awareness. Now, where do these cases take place? Well, you can see in the figure up here those darker colored regions, uh, Africa, India, China, that's where a lot of these cases are happening. These are very populated areas. They're developing nations where healthcare is not as readily available. So, and these are all in, generally in remote villages. And I'm about to show you a couple numbers here, um, some actual numbers and facts about this disease. They're quite staggering. Uh, they kind of always get me every time, even though I've said them hundreds of times. One third of the world's population has tuberculosis. So look to your left, look to your right, you're the unlucky one. That's a lot of people. They have some form of it, may not be active. But how many people actually die? Well, let's put this annually from this disease. Let's put this into some perspective. The state of Nevada, take the whole state, minus 40% of Clark County. That's 1.5 million people every year. Uh, that's everyone in this room every two hours. Those are quite staggering when you think of it. It's, it doesn't have to happen. And one of the reasons why this probably happens is because of inadequate testing methods to diagnose this disease before it spreads too quickly. So current methods such as serology and microscopy, they're easy to use, but these results are speculative at best. Um, some more better methods such as x-ray and culture uh, they're higher performing, but they require uh, trained personnel, lab facilities, which aren't readily available in these, in these countries in remote areas. So we need something that's easy to use and that's highly perf that performs very well. I mean, you can almost train anybody to use it. The other aspect of it is the testing methods are expensive. Uh, for example, um, in India, um, one tuberculosis test cost somebody about their month's salary. So imagine having to spend all your months just to get one test that, will it tell you? Eh, it's speculative. So 
Um, we believe that if we can use our breath, we can probably get that down to the cost of a cup of coffee. So you may pose the question, how do we actually do this? So it turns out a group from New Zealand has identified a couple of compounds that the bacteria in an active patient with tuberculosis releases these compounds. Now, these compounds aren't found in any other healthy patient. So they've actually done some pretty cool studies. They've actually trained some bees and rats to actually sniff out these chemicals and actually sniff out and identify patients with active tuberculosis. That's pretty awesome. But is it practical? I mean, in India, you have to test probably 10, 20 million tests a year. That's, that's 30,000 tests a day. Do we have enough bees? No, the bees are running out. Um, and do we want a lot, of, a lot of rats running around everywhere? That uh, may be some other health concerns that can be uh, talked about in another talk. But um, so we can actually, they've shown that these compounds are there. So how can we detect them in our breath? Well, we can do something using, using electrochemistry, basically an electrical signal. Now what we do is we take a material that's highly selective to these compounds. And this attachment can actually be something on your cell phone. It doesn't take a whole lot of power to run. You can run it on a tablet, a laptop computer. So an infected patient, when they cough into the device, we get this rapid change in electrical signal. So in seconds or even minutes, we know that the patient potentially has tuberculosis. So in a healthy patient, when they cough into it, there's no signal. We've made the surface through some homework in our chemistry to be selective just to those. So it gives that rapid signal and from nothing else. So a lot of this depends on the actual materials that we use and what kind of materials can we look at. They have to be cheap and expensive and robust to make. So what we look at is actually uh, we take a little metal foil, titanium for example, and we do some controlled corrosion, which is basically in a desation it's like those uh, same process as you have carabiners with all those cool colors on them. Same thing, we just change the chemistry a little bit. So we corrode the surface of the metal and we get these tubes, highly ordered. Nice, these, are, these tubes are about uh, anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times smaller than a strand of your hair. They actually self-organize on the surface. So you get this massive amount of surface area. And when materials start to become very small, their properties become very exciting. The surface area decreases, there are more bonds on the surface, so they become more reactive. The cool thing about this material, uh, some other stuff that it's in, it's in uh, your Oreos, it's in toothpaste and paint. The stuff is so cheap, we eat it. It's titanium dioxide. Now, this may not be the best material, but like I said earlier, it's cheap to make, we eat it for Christ's sake, you know? And it's very easy to make. We actually train high school students to make this. And by using existing infrastructure, we can manufacture these on a large scale. We don't have to change anything else. We can make hundreds, maybe even thousands of sensors on the size of your thumbnail. So I'd like, so I'd like you to you imagine just taking your cell phone, clipping a simple attachment to it. You put it in a strip, you cough in it, and it can tell you within minutes whether you may have tuberculosis, diabetes, oxidative stress. So it opens up a whole new array of medical diagnostics using electrochemical techniques. Now, there's some engineering to it that has to be done to miniaturize it and whatnot, but those are the details. And there may be some doubt to this, but without doubt, there is no learning. With no learning, there is no progress. So I'd like all of you to take a deep breath. For your health, it could change everything. Thank you.